Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about EQ, like when to use EQ, uh, dangers of using EQ, and best practices with EQ, okay? So we're not actually gonna be mixing the track in this video. I'm going to actually mix the track with EQ and compression in a later video once you understand uh, the benefits and harms of both, okay? So EQ is really, really powerful, okay? You can really sculpt a sound to exactly how you want, and typically when you use EQ, you're using it for a, a reason, okay? So either you're wanting the sound to stand out or that sound, it could be clogging up the actual song. So you might want to be removing some frequencies and that's pretty much where you want to be using EQ, either to help the sound stand out or kind of dial it back a little bit to allow other sounds to be front and center. One other way you could be using EQ is maybe for like more sound design purposes, and that would be being more aggressive with EQ. Now, EQ can actually be very, very, very dangerous to your music, okay? So again, cutting more than boosting is really, really important. And then you just wanna make sure you're doing a fair volume comparison because that way, when you turn the plugin off and on, you'll know. And as you start to progress in your mix, so for example, let's say on the lead, Let's say we had EQ, let's say we had compression, let's say we had some other effects too. Again, you wanna to try to achieve uh, a nice even sound. So when you turn the plugins off and on, you always want a fair volume comparison because it'll let you know what you're doing. You know, is it actually benefiting your mix or harming it? And then in FL Studio, when you turn off and on the actual plugins, because this is the, the kind of like master in a sense of it's just going to turn off all the plugins. Uh, again, if you look in the top left, uh, they're calling it enable effects slot. Okay, so this disables all the effects or enables them. So let's say you had five effects on here and you disabled them. And now let's say the volume difference was way different. The thing is with music is when we hear something that's louder, typically we think it sounds better. And this is especially important when it comes to the mastering stage, because mastering, um, yes, mastering is about making your music loud. There's also other things involved with mastering. Again, when you're dealing with multiple tracks, you're concerned with the fade in and fade out times. And yes, you know, the loudness and stuff. Um, but especially in the mastering stage, right? If, if, a, if an actual track is louder, typically you think it's better. So it's really important to have a fair volume comparison so that you can actually hear the difference between the loudness at a fair volume comparison because if the track is louder typically what happens is the dynamics the dynamics is like the loud parts to the quieter parts so for example like a kick drum is always going to be hitting you in the chest a kick drum and like snare and stuff those are typically like the loudest parts of uh, a beat right your kick drum and snare so if you're boosting up the volume is really really loud you have to squash them with compression and limiting and stuff like that and now if you have a fair volume comparison to like the before and after you'll notice that the before has a lot more punch. The kick drum's actually hitting you, the snare's more hitting you, and then if you listen to you know, the same volume comparison, but now it's squashed, you'll hear that you're not really getting like that punch. But at the same time, the benefits of maybe it being squashed is it might have a little bit more of a balanced sound. So that's where you kind of gotta get like the best of both worlds of, yes, you want some compression, yes, you want some limiting going on to get that balance, but you don't wanna remove that punch, okay? so. It's all about balance in these types of situations, okay? So again, you know, dealing with, you know, EQ, so you want to be careful in solo. Yes, you can do it. It's, you just got to be careful how you do it. Um, fair volume comparison, and this is with anything to do with music production from what I found over the years. When you turn that effect off and on, this is with EQ and compression especially, you want to hear the benefits or harm that it's doing to your music. And then when it comes to your actual EQ, cutting is more... Um, beneficial than boosting and again the reason why I think that is it's like your mindset okay you're more thinking in terms of how can I make the other instruments stand out but again that's not to say I don't boost um, but when you're starting up that is a great approach to you know mixing your music okay so those are some general things with EQ to get you up and running again in later video uh, we will actually mix this track you know there's not tons going on with the track you know we only have like four instruments and stuff like that but I think it'll still um, you know by understanding this knowledge first going into those videos it's really going to help you out okay I hope you guys enjoy the course if you guys decide to enroll I'll talk to you guys inside the course we cover a lot that's going to get you up and running and really understanding how to use FL Studio uh, and really understand music production at a professional level, okay?